Many people regard the beach as a fun-filled, beautiful space to be at one with nature, other than a relaxed atmosphere to spend holidays or have picnics. Very few are familiar with the other functions of the beach and the processes which contribute to beach formation or erosion on the beaches we enjoy today. The beach is, is really a living organism. It, it, it moves and it changes with tides and currents and, and wave action. And all of this happens as part of a dynamic process that absorbs wave energy and protects the land behind it. We spend so much time on the beach. It's just gorgeous in the sunshine and we love seeing everyone out playing with their families and friends and um, it's just the water so clear it's just a beautiful place to be I mean I personally I just think it's all the biodiversity that comes with these areas um, it's just absolutely stunning the all the variety of fish you know the coral um, all the species that you know feed off of each other up the food chain you know it's just it's a really complex way you know that that the ocean works and I just think it's it's really beautiful and something that we should try to protect. When it comes to the beach, the beach is actually, um, my definition would be pretty simple, just the barrier between the waves and the land. Uh, sometimes it's made out of sand, sometimes it's made out of rock, but whatever it is, it's still a beach. It has a vital role to play in our ecosystem. It protects our uh, land area as well as creates a, a recreational area for our individuals to enjoy. It is immeasurable. Um, certainly there have been uh, an economic valuation of uh, beaches. There have been economic valuation of coral reefs, the near shore environment, and uh, certainly it is in the millions. A beach in, in its layman's term, basically it's uh, an area where you have accumulated um, deposits though it may be sand, stones, shingles, and normally it needs to have a, a platform or a bedrock where water could actually go up and down back into the body of water. That is a beach in terms of its form and morphology. Throughout this process, smaller rocks and other particles dislodged down by the wind, water or ice, are transported by rivers or seas and redeposited by wave action to form beach. The source of the same will also be a result of rock and coral erosion over years onto the coastline leading to the formation of beaches. Wave action helps things along and over time rocks and pebbles are worn. The smaller and smoother the grains or pebbles, the longer or greater they have been subjected to wave action. So the sea continually brings in these sediments and at times it even takes them away but it, it's, it's very cyclic, it, it continues to happen where the sea would bring in some, take away some and that's the main way most of our beaches are formed. In St. Lucia our tides are not very big as compared to other parts of the world but tides are still important at certain times of the day you would find areas of the beach more exposed to the sun or more inundated with water or covered under water um, we have high tide and low tide and during tide that's when we see most of the the sediments coming to the beach staying on the beach and um, as the tide goes out it gets lower those sediments will get packed behind and the tide goes out, so you have this flatter area. The beach is made up of the following zones. A beach is made up of three major zones. Um, it's called the surf zone, the breaker zone, and the swash zone. Now the extent of a beach is not only viewed as from the high water line, to the vegetation line. The extent of a beach starts from the surf zone. This is where the waves start to touch the bottom of the sand, which is the continental shelf, as to as far as where the sand, where you have your berms, and then you have your dunes in the background. So in the surf zone, you have where the waves, that is where you get the high activity of waves. 
the breaker zone is where the waves start touching the bottom as i mentioned and the swash zone is where the waves actually run up the sand or run up the if, if it's a sandy beach it will go up the sand if it's a rocky beach it will go up the stones so those are the, those are the three areas of the beach but the a beach is not only the sandy area the extent of a beach is as i mentioned from the surf zone to as far as the sand dunes and your vegetation line both beaches and dunes undergo several seasonal changes at various points in the year these changes demonstrate the dynamic nature of these systems beach morphology is with evolution you have coastal morphology and you have beach morphology coastal morphology i must i must start if the if the parent then go down to the to the children part of it the coastal morphology is where the interaction of the land and the marine processes takes place now the you need wave you need tides you need currents as well as the sand to the background or the soil oh that's where you may have stones or cliffs and this is what would create the coastal morphology which may give you beaches and with beach morphology this is where you get things like sandy beaches stony beaches shingle beaches which also there is a need for wave energy so the higher the wave energy you would get the different formation of the beach if you have high wave energy you would get beaches which are very steep if you have a low wave energy you would have beaches which are very flat so the and also this is the dependent upon the seasons winter and summer as well in the islands beaches typically extend a certain distance into the sea as well as around various parts the beach zone often incorporates distinct features such as sand banks which are not necessarily part of the beach itself for shoal to exist the wave has to be 1.5 times the height of the bottom of the of the continental shelf so if in terms of that's meters so if the wave touches you'll have a wave coming out from deep water about say 2 meters and you would see it approaching the shore as soon as it touches the bottom which is the wave depth that's the, when the, that's when the shoal takes place so the wave breaks and when it breaks that is within the surf zone and the energy of that wave is what causes the sand to come on so as i mentioned earlier the higher the wave energy it would create sandbanks in different areas right as well as the movement of the currents and it also depends on the tide so at low tide you would get high wave energy creating more sandbanks beaches are a critical habitat for some migratory species this is especially important as they overwinter in the caribbean in search of food and mating this is important for evolution we have crabs we have turtles because turtles lay on the beach, um, they lay in the sand, so sometimes there, there may be a turtle nest and people may not know, but turtles do come and lay. Um, birds are always on the beach. Beaches also have immense value to the island's tourism product. I think it's an essential component. Uh, anybody purchasing a, a holiday in the Caribbean, the expectation is sand, sun and uh, sea. So the two elements there of sand and sea uh, uh, essentially what a beach is all about. So from our perspective, very challenging, although there are many hotels uh, that run without a beach that are more landlocked, um, but really for the most part, the tourism industry is uh, within the Caribbean, it's, it's all, about, all about the beaches. Religious and spiritual rites of passage have been on the rise in these parts. One of our major activity that we um, undertake on the beach is baptism of our members. Uh, one of the reasons why that we chose the beach because uh, our rivers are no more. So therefore, we have us to resort to the beach. On the beach, you may I even do. stumble upon a wedding or two. Though beachside business is booming, there are limitations to the type and extent of developments allowed on the beachfront. We need to take that into consideration into our future planning and um, a recent report released by the UN is suggesting that abandon and retreat will have to become part of our planning 
um, framework in the future because um, sea level will rise, there will be coastal erosion and with, with related consequences for infrastructure and other development that's close to the coast. Have you ever wondered if there were no beaches in St. Lucia or if our beaches were so degraded that it was no longer possible to use them for our enjoyment. We must take great care and learn all we can to preserve them for generations to come.